Hello, welcome to this lesson on Hess's Law, the question of the day. How do you make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Like literally, what steps to make a peanut butter and jelly? Okay, it's kind of a weird question. I understand. Um, the point is that all of our chemical reactions are actually made of teeny tiny steps. There's a lot of steps involved in chemical reactions. This one here is just two steps. There are plenty of chemical reactions that have more steps. There are a few that will occur in just one step. Um, but regardless, chemical reactions are a summary of a bunch of smaller steps. And each step of a chemical reaction has its own delta H value. So here we have an example of nitrogen and oxygen coming together and making um, nitrogen monoxide. And then those nitrogen monoxides go and react with more oxygen to form nitrogen dioxide, okay? Um, this first step has a don't delta H, so does the second step. Well, the summary reaction is taking all of your reactants, one nitrogen and two oxygens, and forming just two nitrogen dioxides. And you can see that this in the circle is actually, we call it an intermediate. It's a product in one reaction, and then it's immediately used as a reactant in the second reaction. So it really just gets used up. When we write the whole reaction, we don't even write the NO, and that's because it gets used up entirely in the reaction. It's almost like it never happened. Um, so because it's a product in the first and a reactant in the second, um, we don't write it in the final reaction. It's kind of like math, where if you have the same thing on both sides, you can cancel it. That's what we're doing here. Our delta H, we have 180, that's a positive 180. We have a negative 112. In total, our delta H is going to be representing a 68 kilojoule exchange. The delta H of the final reaction is going to be the sum or the total of the delta H values for each step of the reaction. Today we're just doing an introduction to Hess's law, but this can get very intricate. Um, but typically what's going to happen is that in your chemistry textbook, there's going to be a page with some steps. If, if the reaction being questioned is not on this reference table, it's likely included with the question. Um, but you will have the list of a bunch of smaller reactions with Delta H values, and you can add, subtract, manipulate any of these reactions as needed. So if you're looking at this list of reactions, Let's say you needed to double the amount of reactants. Well, of course, that would double the amount of products, and that would double the delta H value. If you were to cut your reactions in half, your reactants and products would be cut in half, so would that delta H value. If you were to triple the reaction, you would triple the delta H, so on and so forth. But let's say, like what I said in the, one of the earlier lessons, that you flipped the reaction and you write it backwards. In that case, you would flip the sign of the delta H. So if you were looking at a reaction, the forward reaction from left to right gives you an endothermic result or a positive delta H, you would flip that reaction, read it in reverse, and then your reaction would actually become an exothermic delta H. Now let's say for this summary delta H, um, we had to take a bunch of steps and add them together to get a full reaction. These are the steps that you would follow. First, you're going to have to determine all of the teeny tiny little baby steps that you are going to need, and you're going to have to collect all those delta H values. A lot of the time, you will pull that from a data table. If it's already been done for you, then you would skip that step. Next, you're going to cancel any substances that appear on both sides of the reaction. Um, there may also be manipulations here. So you may have to double one of the steps, half another step, flip a step. All of the manipulations should happen right about there. And then you cancel things that appear on both sides like we did earlier in the lesson. And then you're just gonna add all of the reactants and all the products, add all the delta H values, and you should have your full summary reaction right there. So sometimes you will have the pieces that you need and other times you'll have to go look them up. So let's say right here, we are turning graphite into diamond. We have oxygen, carbon dioxide involved here. Let's read this out. Graphite, which is the carbon that's in a pencil, reacts with oxygen and forms carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide then reacts 
and will form carbon in the form of a diamond with an oxygen product. The delta H for this reaction is negative 394 kilojoules, and the delta H for this reaction is a negative negative 396 kilojoules, which indicates that this reaction had been flipped. Notice that we have an oxygen as a reactant and as a product, so we're going to cancel those. And then we have carbon dioxide as a product and a reactant, and we'll cancel those. When this happens, the summary of our reaction, all that's left over is the graphite and the diamond. And when we add the delta H values, negative 394 and a negative negative 396, in total, our reaction is only two kilojoules of energy to turn graphite into a diamond. That sounds crazy, but that is because there's not a lot of um, bond changes. <laughs> there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of like external stuff, but the reaction itself doesn't have a huge change in energy. Here we are looking at the New York State chemistry reference tables. I think these are a great set of reference tables. Um, so we're gonna kind of break this down. What you would be looking for with these Hess's Law questions would be something like this, heat of reactions. These are happening at 298 Kelvin, which is not quite standard pressure, uh, standard temperature rather, but instead that is more like room temperature. Um, so to begin, we have a bunch of carbon reaction, uh, reaction, <laughs> reactions with oxygen. So these are going to represent combustion reactions. And if you know that combustion is fire, it makes sense that every single one of these is a negative delta H, very exothermic. Next up, we have some synthesis reactions. And those go pretty far. <laughs> Um, so this is typically a synthesis from the elements. That's not necessarily true on this carbon monoxide, but for the most part, it is a synthesis from the elements. Something I would like to point out here is this water situation. This first reaction that I've highlighted in yellow is hydrogen gas and oxygen gas making water vapor. And the second one is hydrogen gas and oxygen gas making liquid water. It is important to note the difference there. They have different delta H values. Um, of course, they're both exothermic here, but I think it is worth it to recognize that those are two separate reactions. So um, make sure just to make a note of that. And then the next section of this table is dissolving in water. So we have KNO3, NaOH, um, ammonium chloride, ammonium nitrate, salt, and lithium bromide. And this is dissolving. Dissolving in water, that's what this little H2O over the arrow is really telling you. Um, it's dissociating into ions here. And we have a mix of endo and exothermic here. The exothermic ones are going to release heat, so they are going to feel a little hot as they dissolve. And then the ones with the positive delta H are endothermic. They're going to absorb energy, and therefore they're going to feel a little bit cold because they're absorbing heat from the surroundings. Last up, we have not yet spoken about this um, in this course, but depending on the uh, sequence your teacher is teaching you, you may have done this already, you have... H plus and OH minus making liquid water. And that has a negative delta H value. This is an acid base neutralization. Um, this will come up later, but just to make the point that um, this forming of liquid water is different from this forming of liquid water is important at this point. Um, this is water being formed from its ions in relation to acid base chemistry. And this is liquid water being formed from its elements, which um, is really like a fair reaction up to this point. So I just wanted to make the, the point of that. Um, and then when it comes to this, for the most part, like you're 
your year one chemistry students are just going to be manipulating these re reactions as it is. And then maybe your honors or pre AP chemistry classes are going to be the ones doing those big Hess's law, adding them together type situations. Um, so in this first reaction here, we have methane combusting in oxygen, and that is a negative 890 kilojoules. But let's just say we were burning a lot of methane. Um, if we would put a two here, that means this two would have to become a four. We would put a two right there and that two would become a four. We've doubled the entire reaction. That means that this ne uh, negative 890 is going to be like negative 1700, whatever it comes out to be. Um, so that's really what we're talking about here. If let's say we were breaking down this carbon dioxide at the top of the synthesis section, obviously if you reverse it, it would be a decomposition now. So let's say, ooh, all right, let's say we had this carbon dioxide reaction and instead of doing the synthesis, we wanted to do the decomposition. We wanted to do it backwards. So in that case, we would have the two carbon dioxides. This is not very nice for writing. Um, and then that would break apart into an oxygen and two carbon monoxides. It does not matter that I've reordered, that looks like, D. That's an O. Uh, it doesn't matter that I've reordered those. That is absolutely fine. What happened here is that I did the reaction backwards. I flipped it. So instead of the synthesis, now it's the decomposition. That means that this negative um, 566 is now going to become positive 566, indicating one, it's endothermic. Nature doesn't really prefer endothermic reactions. So carbon dioxide right there is telling you like, hey, I'm pretty stable. It's kind of hard to decompose me, right? Because you have to put in a lot of energy in order to get it to decompose. Um, so, so that's really what we're talking about here. Now, one thing that I do want to mention, here we have a potential energy diagram for an endothermic reaction. And I think it's important to note that, yes, you can flip these reactions as well. In that case, instead of this ledge being the products, it would be the reactants. And instead of this ledge being reactants, it would be products. The important thing to note is that the distance between those two ledges is not going to change. So that delta H value is going to be the same number. It's just that the sign will have flipped. So um, instead of taking the difference between this ledge and this ledge, we would take the difference between the products over here and the reactants down here. These would be the new products. So it would be this ledge minus that ledge, if you can kind of get what I'm saying here. So again, if you flip the reaction, Nothing really changes height wise because the potential energy is based on the bonds. Um, so the products here have this much energy, whatever this is. If I shift them on the X axis, they're not shifting on the Y axis of this graph. So truly the difference is still going to be between these two ledges. It's just in the subtraction, which value comes first and which value comes second. And the only thing that's going to change there is the sign of Delta H. So, that is it for Hess's law. I know it's a little like crazy. It, it really gets better with practice. So I would definitely practice with whatever resources your teacher is giving you. Um, they do come up in some problems every once in a while. It's kind of like a niche thing. They don't really come up further on in chemistry. It's very specific to kinetics. Um, so please subscribe so you don't miss the next kinetics lesson. We're going to talk about entropy. Uh, leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.